Uh, thank you, everyone, for coming. Um, these uh, really appreciate it. Um, it's always great to get a great turnout. Um, as always, uh, these meetings are recorded. I, I, we, we post them on, on YouTube, so other people who aren't here can, uh, can um, follow along. Um, so uh, lots of stuff happening, and uh, we'll just get into it. Uh, first of all, we can do introductions. Uh, Wojtek, I think this is the first time you've been at this meeting. So uh, I, would you like to do an introduction? Yeah, so hello everybody. Um, I'm CTO of Softatom. Um, Softatom is a company that was founded and is owned by uh, uh, several uh, telecom operators. And our mission is to deliver um, software solutions for the uh, home devices, such as home gateways and set-top boxes. So obviously, uh, open source is something that was always important for us, but its importance is still increasing. This is why we are uh, involved in uh, in Parpool uh, and Open uh, WRT, uh, and we really hope that together we'll be able to push Open WRT toward a career grade solution. So that's we are why we are here. Uh, hi, are you already using OpenWRT on your productive devices, or are you just currently evaluating what to do next? Just out of yes. curiosity, so if you not want to answer, it's no problem. Uh, so today, our the solution that is uh, already deployed doesn't use OpenWRT. Uh, however, as uh, as I mentioned, our goal is to uh, to use uh, open source, and we think that OpenWRT uh, is probably the the right uh, choice. However, it requires some number of um, evolutions and improvements, and this is why we we decided to 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 join our forces with with others. Yeah, thank you. Nice to hear that. Awesome. That's great. Thank you very much, Wojtek. We're glad to have you here. Um, do we have anyone else new at this meeting who, who hasn't been here before? All right. Uh, well, great. Uh, thank you again, Wojtek. We're, we're glad to have you here. Um, we can just move on to our next topic, uh, board farm status. Uh, my status is I have done uh, have had no, no time on this. I was off. Uh, I was out sick Friday and Monday, so I have not had time to work on this at all. Um, and lots of other exciting stuff going on. Did um, Did you see my note that? Um, did I did. Did you see my note that Matthew might be able to help you? Have you contacted yes. him? I've not had a chance. Okay. To contact Good. Him. I I do need. Oh, to. you haven't. Okay. Yeah. I mean, reach out to him before his time is gone, before he gets a new job. <laughs> Okay, I will do that. Definitely, definitely, I will do that. Um, I I don't know, it, Wojtek and and uh, folks from ADB, are you familiar with Board Farm? Uh, not really. I have an idea what can it be, but if you can explain a few words, what's that? Uh, it will be great. Sure. Uh. Board Farm um, was uh, originally created, uh, Mike, who's on the call, um, and by Matt at uh, QCA, and it's an automated testing solution for testing an actual OpenWRT device. You run, you run tests, you know, install a new, um, a new piece of firmware to make sure it boots, and you can test, like, you know, does the network work, and what kind of performance do you get, um, things like that. Uh, Purple and particularly myself, we've been working a lot on, on, um, on, on making it work as a kind of a uh, a general, um, a solution for testing a, a bunch of devices from Purple vendors, um, but also potentially allow um, external users to connect 
uh, say core team members who are like, okay, a test doesn't work. Why exactly, why doesn't it work? And can we connect to a device that we don't own, but we can, we have, uh, you know, SSH access to, to figure out why it might not be working and, and fix problems with it. So it's a really cool tool and I really enjoy, enjoy using it, but um, so yeah. That's the, that's what, the kind, what kind of test is it intended to perform? I mean, Mike can Mike can talk about. It. I mean, I've obviously I've worked with it a lot. But, sure, uh, um, I can say it has networking tests. You can also check for kernel panics, memory leaks, anything that you might type yourself on an OpenWRT uh, router or gateway. It, it can type those commands too, so it can change UCI settings. Run some ping or curl or iperf or netperf test through the device. Um, and just you know, you automate the results. Have to running through like a suite of these. Yeah, okay, thanks. Yeah, it's it's really slick. It it uh, the the kind of the gist of it is, um, it runs pretty much like Mike said. Any test that you can run at the command line, um, if you have a tool that can you know do anything. You basically just it parses the output and then coordinates between like an upstream and downstream device and you know make sure that all the results are what you expect them to be based upon what you your input is. So it's a pretty cool tool. Okay. Okay, great. I will have a look on that. Awesome. Yep. the The GitHub is there. We've we have some some I have some an open pull request that. Uh, I had sent, but need to get fixed um, that we're running. And we also have a uh, uh, one board running. Um, and once I find more time, I'll, I'll be adding more boards that we've do had donated. And we certainly appreciate, you know, if there's um, open WRT support for particularly some sort of device that is from a purple member, we're happy to add that and, you know, kind of uh, build out this official kind of uh, testing platform. All right, anything else related to board farm that anyone wants to talk about? All right, awesome. Uh, we'll move on to funding OpenWRT projects. Um, first thing is that we have three projects, uh, smaller projects that we have agreed to fund. Um, we are just working out uh, the uh, the details on um, the agreement we have to have. It was kind of a, it was one of those situations where, you know, they're not large enough that you want a real consulting agreement, but at the same time, you kind of want something. So we're just working with our uh, our people that that handle things like that to just kind of give us some a lightweight template so that we can um, kind of describe the state, the, the work that's expected um, and, uh, and have those, um, have those signed and, you know, people can start working and, and get paid for the for the cool projects that they've that they've submitted. Um, the other area of funding is uh, the TR069 work. Uh, I, I don't know why I didn't put it in there, but we, we first of all, we do have a meeting tomorrow at 7 a.m. Um, I've sent sent out, uh, you know, emails and invitations for that. Uh, so we're going to continue kind of the discussion probably uh, from uh, Luca and Felix. Uh, and also talk about the important part is our in uh, in person meeting, which we are going to have on the 28th and 29th in in, in Paris, which uh, Voitech and Soft at Home have graciously offered to host. Um, so that should be a lot of uh, a, a, good, a good time, and get a, we should be able to get a lot of good work done. So uh, I'm really really excited about that. So I, I don't know if there's anything you want to say about that Voitech, but um, You no, know, personally, I think that you know when the topics are uh, important and many different ideas, the only way to converge is to meet from time to time and to discuss them face to face. Absolutely, I totally agree. And it, it's uh, there's a lot of lot of ways that people have tried to um, crack this nut, so to speak, and we're kind of uh, we got to figure out which one is the one that's that's the best way to move forward and uh, and fits obviously the needs of the carrier, but uh, you know equally as important is fits the needs of the OpenWRT project so that it fits well into what they're 
what they're trying to do. So I think that I think that's going to go well. Um, so those are the big things with uh, with funding open WRT projects. Um, I don't know if there's anything else anyone wants to talk about related to that. Um, all right. Oh, the, the other thing is we're going to be starting the carrier interest group at Purple. Uh, that's kind of not really fits under the funding open WRT project, potentially could be. Um, and that is, uh, I, I have to send out the emails to get that started. I've, I've been extremely busy this week when, and I was off sick, so I've been a little behind on that and I apologize. But uh, it's gonna be kind of, a, you know, I, we don't technically, we're gonna obviously at the first meeting decide a uh, kind of a mission for the carrier interest group, but it's kind of gonna be a way to uh, coordinate a lot of the interest among uh, people involved as carriers or interested in in, care, in the issues of carriers and how they interact to purple um, and in, in the various uh, pegs, including obviously the security peg and open WRT and potentially any other pegs that are started. So um, I don't know if there's anything more we wanna talk about that, but just wanted to kind of put that on people's radar. All right. Uh, regulatory update. Uh, I just wanted to uh, let people know that last week uh, we got an email from the FCC asking to uh, talk with uh, with Purple specifically about the uh, topic of uh, of the the radio uh, lockdown restrictions. Um, they are particularly interested in the security pegs uh, demo of moving the radio into a separate uh, virtual machine. There are obviously um, advantages and disadvantages to that, but uh, they wanted to kind of just get a better sense of what's being proposed. And also it sounded like they want to kind of have a um, kind of a broad sense of how do we get more people involved in that, in a discussion of what's the best step forward, not just purple, not just, uh, you know, the members of Purple, but also people in, you know, the open source community, people involved, the, like ham radio operators, uh, users, just a general kind of broad um, set of interested parties on this topic to kind of come up with what they sounds like they want to come up with kind of a short term plan and a long term plan and how to address this topic. Um, so uh, I know Art and I and I think Kathy and there may be a few other people just are going to have an initial meeting with them next Monday uh, to kind of just just talk with with the people from I think they're it's the laboratory testing division. Um, and we'll just kind of see what what they what their interest is and and hopefully that has uh, some positive steps going forward. Um, I'm I'm heartened that uh, our discussion and uh, the the discussion that we had last year about this topic, it seems to have, um, I don't wanna say struck a nerve, but it seems to have had an effect on the FCC's thinking to, to wanna talk about this discussion more on this topic. Um, Cause it, yeah, it's very serious. Um, so that's pretty much with that. Uh, last thing uh, is uh, yesterday we had a, um, we had a meeting, uh, OpenWRT Summit Committee. Um, we had previously had a vote and decided that October 13th is gonna be the day of the summit. That's the Thursday of ELCE and Open IoT Summit. It's the, the last day, full day of the summit. Um, so we are going to, we're going to go ahead with that. I've contacted Linux Foundation and uh, they are going to get uh, our, the information necessary to you know sign the agreements and, you know, and the, and uh, pay any fees and, and things like that. So uh, we are going ahead with that date. Um, and we also kind of talked yesterday at the summit committee meeting um, and the the video will be posted. Uh, uh, I don't think it's posted yet, but it'll be posted soon. Um, about next steps, the things that we're gonna have to do is, is we're gonna have to work on the RFP. Uh, to make sure that we get some some people some uh, get people involved and get good discussions and um, a sense of kind of the uh, uh, of what we should be asking people what what's a what's a good plan for uh, handling proposals and things like that. Uh, they've asked me to send to the the mailing list kind of a summary of um, what we used last year 
because uh, last year it was kind of uh, I had done it all myself and uh, I, you know worked pretty well. But um, you know what what can we reuse from that and what do we need to need to create and things like that. So that those are the big things the summit committee meeting and the and everybody who's at the meeting kind of agreed that for at least the next uh, little bit of time I don't know how long but at least certainly next week we're, we're going to just uh, not have a meeting we'll just do it on the mailing list it's probably more effective for kind of the uh, text discussions and things like that and then once we kind of get closer to the actually sending out the RFP and trying to recruit people we could probably have another we should probably have another in, uh, voice meeting. So are there any questions about uh, OpenWRT Summit? All right. Um, uh, Rick, oh, I, yeah. ha I have a question because uh, I remember last year, you know, that was a very interesting meeting. Yep. A lot of different presentations, but now as we are in a more uh, working uh, um, mood, I'm just wondering whether we sh should already um, reserve maybe one day more for um, different face-to-face -face meetings that we could manage at the same time. It will avoid people traveling, uh, you know, for two different things. If we could gather uh, all this stuff uh, together. Yeah, I think I think that's a good idea. We've we've kind of um, uh, we've talked about that yeah. already. That uh, in fact, I reached out to Felix since he's located in Berlin to see if he could suggest any places we could meet for informal working meetings. We we can't. I, I, Eric, correct me if I'm wrong. I, I think we can't reserve the same conference room or place, but if we could find another place to have a working hacking type of meeting on Friday, that's definitely. Uh, been discussed. Yeah, We'd like to do that. Place, what's important is that it will be in, in Berlin, and then yep. whether it's the same room or not, it's a detail. Yeah. Yep. I think that I think that's a great idea. We're yeah. We're we're we definitely we we should be doing that. I we didn't didn't like formally decide on that, but I think it's kind of informally that is kind of a kind of the plan. But uh, that you know, the first day would be at on October thirteenth would probably be the. Um, you know presentations and kind of the you know that kind of stuff and the next day would be more of a of a working day and depending on people's um interest it'd be more of a hackathon or, or whatnot it just kind of depends on what what their interests are and and what makes sense for them so yeah definitely i think we're i think we're completely uh on the same page there Awesome. Um, are there any other topics that people would like to discuss related to uh, Purple WRT and Open WRT and anything else? Um, maybe I have a question uh, that everybody knows the answer. Uh, what the current status of relationship between uh, Open WRT and the, the lead for? Hauke, do you want to take this one? <laughs> yeah, I can tell. Um, so mm, the current situation is when um, some yeah some of the active developers of OpenWRT decided about um, I think it was started about Easter um, that we want to fork or make make a reboot of a project. And yeah, mainly to yeah fix some uh, organizational issues um, we had for a long time in OpenWRT and we couldn't really fix. Um, from a technical point, the lead project it's uh, more or less the same what happened before in OpenWRT. So except uh, yeah, the most things is organizational stuff. So uh, it should be more open for new developers. Uh, so to make it more easy for them to uh, submit patches uh, and also to integrate to get it integrated later on um, <clears throat> so there's yet yeah, tries to to merge again but I don't know what happens there so I cannot 
say, so we are for this, you probably have to read, read the mailing list and so on. So I don't know what's, what will happen there. And how can I, I know you as a person representing Lamptic now Indo uh, at uh, in the field of OpenWRT. So should I understand that the, the reason why you are involved in this work is because that's also the decision of uh, Intel? Uh, no, Intel doesn't really has to do so. Um, I was active in OpenWRT many years before I joined Intel. Yeah. Uh, and um, yeah, I'm more or less, I think, uh, representing Intel <laughs> there, but um, yeah, this was more personal. So Intel wasn't really involved, uh, the Intel management in this uh, fork. I don't know. So we will probably take the uh, yeah use the active project for uh, our internal um, for development internally at, at Intel. So I think we haven't found a real decision. So currently we are waiting. What hap Intel currently waits what happens. Okay. Yeah, I think a, a lot of comp a lot of people have asked me that same question. How okay is like. Well, which branch should we follow? So if we can converge those quickly, that would help a lot of people. So uh, currently, um, many I see that many people are sending patches to both mailing lists. Uh, that's completely okay. That's pro probably currently the, the best solution. Um, and for the uh, releases, so currently when you want a stable release, then probably take the um, Chaos Kambler release from OpenWRT, and I think for current development, yeah, yeah, just try to send your patches to both mailing lists. And I think for lead, we are currently, yeah, there's still a list of open to dos, and then there should hopefully be a release uh, soon, so, so not in the next month, but um, uh, yeah, when it's stable and it, most of the to dos are addressed. But is the is the tracking going well between the two branches so that when or the organizational stuff gets fixed that it won't won't be complicated to just say okay boom here's one, so one branch from, again. So from my personal opinion, so currently, yeah, we, we uh, some people from Leeds right uh, sometimes to get um, more than once to get yeah some some. People in and currently we have some yeah, communication problems. I don't know. Um, so it looks like some people that are only in OpenWRT are interested in there, but yeah, currently for me it looks like there's not so many interest. But I, yeah, I don't know uh, what will happen there in OpenWRT. I see some announcements. Um, yeah, but I cannot say more than what's on the public mailing list, so there's nothing. So at least not to my knowledge, um, uh, nothing big happening behind the scenes. So, yeah, most the communication is uh, open. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I don't think anyone needs to... I mean, I don't tell, need to tell you, Hauke, but obviously the... It, uh, the uh, the sooner this could get uh, hopefully merged again, it, the better for everyone. Um, it's uh... absolutely. I'm just afraid that if two branches keep uh, uh, separated to drink uh, too long, both can become dead, and that's what I would like to avoid. Everyone will, yeah, absolutely. I think everyone would like to avoid that, and the it's going to be hard to for the for the industry to support two relatively similar uh, Linux distributions, but uh, you know, ha significant portion of the people are in one and the other portion of the people are the other. It's, it's just rough for everyone, but obviously those organizational and uh, political and I don't want to call them political, but you know, just, just like some of the personal stuff just needs to get figured out. And that obviously is it's not, a, it doesn't fit a timeline. It's difficult, I know with any of these projects. All right. Well, if anything else anyone wants to talk about, or can we call it a meeting?
All right. Uh, well, uh, thank you, everyone. I appreciate you coming. Uh, and uh, we will see people both next week at uh, this meeting and also uh, at uh, if you're going to be involved in the TR069 stuff, we will see you at that meeting tomorrow, bright and early at 7 a.m. Pacific. Excellent. All right. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye.